Wait, Ladies we're... and gentlemen, oh, Mitchell, shut the fuck up! God damn it! Now we have to start over. <laughs> <laughs> this is how this this is how this night's gonna go. Ladies and gentlemen, brosners of all shapes and sizes, welcome back to the Wild Times, episode forty-one, the greatest podcast on earth, the only podcast that's doing three times the amount of uh, listens and views than the Joe Rogan Show. It's incredible. Our numbers are unbelievable. Where they're going, I don't know because they don't show up on YouTube or iTunes, but they're there somewhere. Uh, this is the Wild Times Podcast, a podcast dedicated to talking science, wildlife, fun, adventure. I am your host, Forrest Galante, the broologist, joined by the ever-handsome Retep, the, the professor. Retep, what's up, buddy? Cheers, mates. Just having a little cocktail. Been waiting for this night all week. Love you guys. Hey, Mitch. I believe welcome that. Welcome to the show. I believe that. As always, joining myself and Retep yeah. is Papa P., Popper Pill Popper, Papa Patrick DeLuca. <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of peas when I do that, that bit. Uh, um, the producer. What's up, Patrick? How are you? Hey, pretty good. Okay. Yeah, good. real excited to have, have our, our guest on today. Yes. We've been most, talking about it for 40 episodes. <laughs> for 40 episodes, most yeah. excitingly, joining us tonight, if you are listening for the very first time, hey. is the one and only, the incredibly special and unique, the director of Brotography. The camera <laughs> broperator, if you will, Mr. Mitchell Long. What's up, Mitch? What's going on? I, I, I don't. I can't say I'm excited to be here, but um, it's something I for feel sure. You, man. I feel you. <laughs> good, good. That's good. Oh man. Well, this is good. We've been talking. So, so for those that don't uh, follow the podcast, we do the thing at the end of the podcast called the Battle Royale. It's probably everybody's favorite segment. We make up fact, fictitious animals and battle them or compete in some way. And right, right before we logged on to the podcast, I was like, all right, Mitch, so have you got your Battle Royale kind of figured out? you familiar with it? He's like, I, I don't know what that is. So in 40 weeks of making this, my closest friend, Mitchell Long, yes. has given yeah. it <laughs> zero listens. And, no, that's uh, not fair. That's not fair. I've listened, to, I've listened to a lot of them, but not the entire span. So it's like okay. 10 minutes here, 10 minutes mm. there. I basically just tune in when you make fun of me and I, you know. Tune I back just, out. Yeah, exactly. Then mm-hmm. I just turn and then okay. I just turn it off. <laughs> it's right. it's All right. great. Ritep, what's your week been like? Yeah, it's been a. It's just been your your average week. A lot of lot of hard work. Uh, just preparing for the podcast for at least six to eight hours a day. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah. You know, yep. Daily Same. videos. L- lots to manage in this empire we're running here. That's about it. All right. What about Look, I, I've got a lot of things that I want to talk about tonight, but none more so than Patrick DeLuca's T-shirt. If you're watching uh, on YouTube. <laughs> I, I, yeah, Patrick, can you tell us what's uh, what, what are you wearing there? It's just a shirt with like a cool picture on it. It's just it's, like a gra- it cool is graphic. It's the lamest picture kind of looks I've ever douchey. seen. Who is that yeah. on it, your uh, t-shirt? Yeah, there. is that is that James Franco's younger brother's <laughs> more ugly younger brother? I think it's Ryan right. Seacrest. More ugly, more ugly. It's, are you mm. kidding me? This looks like a male model on my shirt. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. no. well, who is it? No. Tell us. The brosters no, are curious. It's me wearing a suit. <laughs> why do you, why are you wearing a t-shirt of yourself wearing a suit? <laughs> because some photos were posted of me online from a, a photo shoot mm-hmm. that was done that I, you know, begrudgingly went to, like all pictures that exist of me. Yeah, that's true. And uh, pictures. my nephew, who's we've talked about Charlie on the podcast, for Christmas he was mm-hmm. so appalled by the photo shoot <laughs> that he... <laughs> superimposed my face onto t-shirts and gave them to the entire family for Christmas. Oh, the entire <laughs> family? Yeah. That, the whole family yeah. got them. That's yeah, so they're, they're all... Because he thinks it's really embarrassing to, like, have a be professional handsome. picture taken uh, yeah. of you looking like a male model. So wow. it's like, let's be real. <laughs> I'll just wear it. It's, I've never okay. seen anything more embarrassing, to be honest. Very nice. Right, so Very it's, nice. One of those, it's one of those gifts that you acted like you hated. But in reality, you were like, oh, my God, this is the best gift. No, <laughs> dude, my, 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 eyes, my eyes lit up. Like, <laughs> I was just like, yes, this is oh awesome. So, yeah, so these will be in the merch store soon if you want a oh, shirt with the oh producer and, uh, and a suit. I would wear, looking I would wear a Papa P, Papa P t-shirt for sure. Oh, me too, man, so, absolutely. So, Mitch, since you've never listened, even though Forrest and I, you said, are your two best friends that you've ever had. Uh, absolutely. And you, and you don't listen Inequ- to the show. Inequitably, yep. We talk a lot of nonsense. We talk about wildlife news so that people who are interested don't have to, you know, go scrub the news. We pull all the best stories. So let's get right into one, Forrest. What? Uh-huh. Especially because this week you got 
I noticed you got a brand new desk. I do uh, every yeah. week. Yeah. What kind of tree is that? Is that pure baobab? It is. Yeah, it's a baobab <laughs> uh, tree. It was actually nice. at one point in time a dow, a Malagasy canoe that was now flipped over and turned into my new desk. Ah. Mitchell, this is a running bit on the show, FYI. Very cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so what's your favorite thing that came across your, your dow? Oh my god, I am excited. There is a new discovery of a new bat species with orangutan hue, that orange incredible hue, discovered in West Africa yesterday. Um, this wow. incredible new species of bat is from the the Nimba Mountains in Guinea. Uh, it's incredibly rare, it's never been seen before. And it's one of those things that for me is just like, you know, everybody's like, oh, a new species discovered, it's an ant. It's like, no, this is a full, like, pretty good sized bat um, that's yeah. come out of this incredible region. Um, it, 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 scientists set out on an expedition survey in 2018, but it's only now that they've found this fiery orange colored bat. Um, with these black wings, it's just incredible looking. Do we have a ah, picture? It's just super of that? exciting. It's this. There's, yeah, there's a picture. Crazy looking. WT, can you can you pull one of those up for us? It doesn't even so look they, like a bat. It, <laughs> well, one of the things that they're saying is cool about this is that, you know, there there are a lot of like 1,400 species of bat. Yep. And every year they find some new species, but they're usually it's like in a lab Correct. and they see that the DNA is slightly different. Correct. This was like they saw it and were like, oh, that's different. We right. don't know that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. It, you know, look at that thing. It's incredible. It's bright orange. That thing was flying around overhead. You know, it's a big bat, if I'm not mistaken. I read somewhere the size. But, you know, it's like your standard large bat size. And It just, looks like it's in a full-on, it looks like it's in a baby bassinet, it, filling it up. It's very cute. It's very exactly cute. what it looks like. It, it looks um, like yeah. one of our Battle Royale creations, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It looks like someone did, like, bat body and lion head. Yeah, it's got a mane, dude, this It thing. does have a mane. That is a good observation. Well, I think that that's Part definitely lion. my favorite thing that's come across my Baobab desk. Looks a bit this like Mitch, I, actually, now that I th now that I look at it close, it looks. You say it looks like me? No, no, I didn't a little say bit. That. I'll take it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, so look, we 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 haven't had a guest in a while. Yeah, I guess for most of our listeners are very interested in wildlife uh, or just drinking. It's one or the other. It is. Uh, Mitch is pretty good at one. <laughs> He's terrible at the other. His face turns red. <laughs> Like I, uh, a teenager. I don't, I, which, which one are you talking about? I actually don't know. <laughs> well, for those who don't know, Mitch is a, a camera uh, a director of photography that uh, Forrest and I have worked with a bunch, shot wildlife all over the world, which I think people find fascinating. Like, you know, Planet sure. Earth, when I first watched that years ago, hmm. the, the coolest part was at the very end where they showed the camera guys and how, how they got shots. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, like... What would you say, Mitch, in your career, in your illustrious mm -hmm. Emmy-nominated career, <laughs> what, is, what is, like, your favorite shot of an animal that you've ever gotten? Oh, mm, man. That's a good question. Favorite shot of an animal I've ever gotten? I think I know his answer, and if he says something different, I will remind him of this. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah. it, <laughs> God, that's a that's a that's a great question. Well, what's coming into your mind? Just throw out a couple. I the the one that immediately comes to mind is the the shot of the rhino in had to be had to yeah, be. That's yeah. what I was waiting for. I was just waiting to tell the story. I was like, if you don't tell it, I have to bring it up. So let's it's go. funny because I was gonna. The next question was, what's the closest you've come to shitting your pants when filming an animal? So you just answered <laughs> both. <laughs> Those two actually are uh, one and one that, right there. That's it's the same story. It's literally that that rhino in Africa was, I think. Because of just how close I was and the so shot Mitch, itself. For, for those yes, that you know, seen, haven't right? seen Extinct or Alive, why don't you mm -hmm. paint us a little picture here? Picture, all right. So the, the picture <laughs> is for about like three days, we, the, me and the camera department, we were all taking turns going out first thing in the morning to go look for rhinos with this legend, John. Oh, no, that, sorry. I was, <laughs> wasn't talking about Forrest. I was talking about. Uh, John Stevens. John, John Stevens. Stevens yeah. The legend John Stevens. I was going That's out right. with John Stevens, the legend, and accompanied by Forrest Galante. That's right. But mainly for mainly John Stevens. But we, <laughs> for multiple days, we were trying to like you know just see a rhino uh, in you on know, the, foot in the bush, which is yeah. not something that you can do pretty much anywhere left in the world, right? You mm. sit in a car in Kruger, you drive on the paved roads, go. There's Absolutely. a rhino. Absolutely. Like we were in deep bush Africa, yeah. tracking rhino on foot for about three days. Yeah, please. Continue. So, a, so our our at the you know for that episode our you know our main camera guy had gone out with Forrest, hadn't had any luck, came back. 
the AC had gone out, not any luck. And so finally, one, you know, one of the last mornings we were there, we were like, all right, Forrest is going to go in the morning. Who wants to go? And I was like, all right, well, it's my turn. I'm going. So I, we woke up at, I think like, it was like 3.30 in the morning, mm-hmm. got everything prepped, got it ready, got, went out and you know, cruised out in a safari vehicle. We ended up spotting a rhino from the road, got out, and then tracked it on foot. This went on for maybe you know, two, three hours where we just patiently walked and kind of got close to this thing. And well, it, we had to stay downwind, and we'd yeah, hear him, awful. and we'd approach slowly from behind a bush, and then we'd, yep. you know, he'd flank us to the right, so we'd move to the left so that the wind direction was with us. So we, we were doing a song and dance. And is it, it hard to walk, is it hard to walk quietly when your underpants are full of poo-poo? <laughs> it, it, it is because like there were multiple times where I was walking and I'd like stop and hear something and I'd, I would look at the guide like what was that and they're like oh that's that's the pack of lions tracking us and I'm like <laughs> <"Excuse me?" laughs> like what and they're like yeah that's 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 the lions that are literally they're like surrounded us like they won't attack and I'm like well, how do you know that and they're like well they they never have and I was like well <laughs> still means, that's not very comforting like they still could and they're like ah oh, you know I mean. They're like they're like a hundred meters away. I'm like that's that's like a football field. Like that's not that far. <laughs> but it, well, yeah. you know, it was it was one of those things where you know whatever we're on foot. We're you know I, I it's not that I felt safe, but I felt like you know I have force there who I trust. I have the guides there that I trust. I was like all right, whatever. Let's go on foot. Let's track this thing. So we go charging into the bush. You know we're quietly sneaking up on this rhino who constantly is moving his way away from us. And finally, after, you know, maybe an hour, two hours, we finally get to a position where, you know, I can get a shot where I see Forrest and the rhino together, which is always, that's the dream shot in any wildlife show. If you can get a host and the animal in the same shot, that's, that's, that's and clutch. I think for because, a second, and, sure. You know, oh, go ahead, Patrick. I was going to say, and, and why is that? It's yeah. because you can't fake that. Right. right. There's no there's no there's no argument of oh, I could just use a stock footage shot of a rhino and a shot of forest and like, oh, my God, look, there it is. The minute you get that shot and not that we ever do that, we, you know, but but we, people do. The, people yeah. people do. do. It's a big it ha- thing. It happens. And so I, I do want to say this. Minute, to, sorry, Mitch, I just want to interrupt and say one thing about that. Really. To Mitch's credit, which I really in fact, I'd rather you stop listening for a second. You know, like for all those people that have, uh, you know, watch Planet Earth or Blue Planet or whatever, you have these incredible shots of animals, right? Try and do that while also putting the host in the frame. You know, it's incredibly challenging it's, what it's Mitch difficult. has to do. And especially when your host is me, who's, you know, all hopped up on Mountain Dew jumping around like a lunatic. Yeah, baby. Uh, <laughs> Best drink ever. Yeah. So it's, you know, I credit to Mitch because his his one of his main things is always connecting me with these oftentimes extinct animals, but wild creatures that we're out tracking. And in this case, he's trying to get a shot of me talking about this rhino. And in doing so, what happened, Mitch? It, so, I mean, like you said, if in, you know, for for the purposes of our show, like if you can't get you and an animal together, it you know, it's just not as good. So we're constantly trying to connect forest to an animal. So in this circumstance, we were tracking this rhino going through the woods. Two hours later, I finally get to a position where it's like I've got forest in one side of my frame and I got the rhino in the background and I'm like, oh, this is it. And forest is looking at the camera and talking about the rhino and it's like this great epic moment. And we're all like, oh, this is... And that, right after he was done, forest was done with his whole presentation, talked about the rhino, did everything. It was like I had such this relief of like, wow, we, I got it, right? But right after that, the, one of our trackers was like, oh, my God, yeah. Mitch, there's a better shot, like, 10 feet this way. So I'm like, oh, great. So I, I like, change lenses quick, move over, and I was standing between these two trees. And I, like, got crouched down, got this, you know, distant shot of a rhino. Well, this rhino. But, and let me just say this he, quickly, because <laughs> you're about to explain why, or you're about to explain what happened. But what happened is when Mitch shifted and we moved, either we went – upwind of it a little bit or the wind changed and then what happened mitch right so we i'm standing between two tiny like when i say trees i don't mean trees they're like twigs sticks. they're like these little sticks i'm standing between these sticks knelt down and this rhino just starts walking in you know he just starts walking toward me walking toward me and i'm filming and i'm you know i have my eye through the lens so i'm like oh this looks great look at this amazing shot and he's just keeping closer it in and closer. focus not All thinking right. about and what's I, happening. As, a, as i'm like you know racking out and i'm like 
kind of like, I know I have, I had a, for you camera nerds out there, I had a 70 to 200 lens. So I like was at 200. And as he gets closer, I'm like backing out, backing out, backing out. And all of a sudden I'm at the end of my lens. I'm like, holy shit, he's really close. And I'm in focus and I look up and the thing is like 15 feet away. And I was like, oh my God, what have I done? And then the thing, (laughs) at that point, at that point I just sort of froze and I was just like, fuck. Like I, at this point, like, what do I do? Like he's 10 feet, he's 15 feet away. He's looking right at me. You know, it would take him maybe a split second to get from him to me. Like I looked up at me, remember? And I whispered to you. What did you whisper? What What did you whisper? So I, in my head, I, I remember thinking, and it's, it's all, it's all very clear because it's, it's a, it's a moment in my life where I actually have, feel like I had perfect clarity, but I remember thinking, and it is honestly like, not that I want to fucking, you know, pat Forrest on the back by any means, but (laughs) this is something that like Forrest has always kind of instilled in all of his camera crew is, you know, when you're in your, any, with your, in your, if you're close with any animal, just act normal, just don't freak out, just be calm. Yeah, but you, you kind of got to have no right? amygdala like Forrest does to do exactly. that. So I don't exactly. expect like, that you did that. Freaking out is not going to help anyone. It's going to get yourself killed. So he looks right, up at me. He looks up. He looks up. And he sees Forrest and everybody. He looks back at me. I'm the closest, and I'm just like, God damn it! This is this is it. I'm I'm screwed. Yeah. And I just I just completely froze. Just rock solid. And he looks at me. And he kind of does this whole like, Who, he gets all or tense the hip, or the uh, rhino, no, the, 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 rhino. No, the rhino, the rhino, the rhino. <laughs> so he gets all tense and he's like looking at me. He does this whole foot thing and he's just like ready. And Kicking I'm like, this dust, is it. I'm like, this is it. This is it. You know, starting, starting to get I'm ready like, to charge, right? So he kicks up <laughs> dust. He does a <laughs> out his out his nostrils. He's locked onto Ooh, Mitch in the scent. Yeah. Now rhinos, for those that don't know, they have terrible vision, right? They're really really poor eyesight. But they are, and they feel incredibly nervous if they can smell a threat, and they will charge. Without any question, they will charge. So what happened was, Mitch is behind these twigs. I'm just to his right behind, you know, a slightly larger stick that I could maybe have pulled myself up in in an emergency. And the rhino (laughs) looks over, and it goes, basically the rhino's thinking, there's something there. I can see a shape through the bushes. I don't know what it is. I can smell it. It's 15 feet away. I'm going to kill it. So they, right? That's what's going through the rhino's mind. Mm-hmm. And Mitch is locked on 15 feet away, eyeball to eyeball with this thing. He looks up at me, and I just, I, what did I say to you, Mitch? You, it was early. You said anything. It was just the, the, everybody was just mouthing, don't move. <laughs> don't move. Like, yeah, right. Why? Don't because move. It, it would immediately just charge his ass if he bit Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. 100%. Zero question about so, it. So yeah. any, any said movement than done. at all. Yeah, Easier when you're enough, 15, for sure. when you're 15 feet from a 3,000 pound animal, yeah, yep. right, that has yep. a 12 notoriously inch, bad temper. Yeah, bad <laughs> temper. You've been it's got a for three fuck, hours. It's perfectly built for killing lions for just right? running straight at something and killing it. And yep. you're <laughs> the only thing it's thinking about. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what was going on. It's yeah. also exactly the moment that you pooped your pants. So that was that was yeah. yeah basically. So he looks so so this rhino staring at Mitch. They're in a lock off. You know, Mitch looks up at me. I, he's right. I don't think I said anything. I just mouth, don't move. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Mitch just looked like literally just turned his head back to the rhino. So he was watching, and I could feel what Mitch was thinking. Because by the way, I was terrified. Not for Mitch. I was terrified for myself. <laughs> like, I've never been yeah. 15 feet away from a wild rhino yeah. before, and I was like yeah. 22 oh, wow. feet away. You know, and yeah. Mitch was closer. This was this was a this was probably the most tense moment we've ever had on the show with an animal. Yeah, yeah. And it was. It, it, it was lasted scary, for sure. It lasted what? A, 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 just under a minute, I'd say. Yeah, about a minute. Problem? I would say about a minute. About, about a, a minute. minute. From the minute the, it geez. stopped, it stopped right in front of me to where it finally. It, it was about a minute, but that minute was. I mean, that was the, it was the longest minute of oh my, my life. God. I mean, oh my god! Oh my god! It felt like an hour and a half. Yeah, it was. But I, I can, I can definitely say like there was a moment like when I looked at Forrest and he said, "Don't move." And then at one point I looked over at the other. Behind the tree, like to my left, there was one of our other guides was kind of looking at me like, just you, know, yeah, <laughs> doing yeah. that, just like, <laughs> like yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, it's finally, I like, I was just like, all right, like screw it, I'm, I'm in this situation, mm-hmm. like let's just, em- I, I almost had a point where I was like, let's just embrace it. So I like looked back at the rhino and I just kind of locked eyes, and it wasn't, I don't know, like it, some people believe in like universal, you know, feelings sure. and whatever. Karma. 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 Yeah. I, I had a moment where I like looked back at the rhino and I was just like, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just photographing. Like, <laughs> please, please spare me. Yeah. Like, you know, I had yeah. that, I had that moment with the rhino and the rhino just kind of looked at me 
And then he kind of like would look back at like Forrest and them who were kind of like tucked behind a tree. And then he'd look back at me. And a mo- there was a couple moments where he like kind of like moved forward. And I was like, oh, this is it. And then he kind of stopped. And then after like Forrest said about a minute, he just sort of was like, all right. Kicked you're, his head you're, up you're and, okay. and just turned and, and charged he, off into the bush. He completely, his total, his whole demeanor changed. He calmed down and he just sort of was like, all right, I'm good. And he kind of turned and walked away. And I like, not to like brag, but like up until right when he walked away, I was, I was pretty good. Like I held a like stone cold face. I was like, all right, I, this is the situation I'm in. Yeah. Keep calm, you know, don't react. Don't freak out. Like that's just going to set it off. So I just kind of accepted what i was in everything was fine and the minute he moved the minute he left i went from being like i'm totally fine like you're I'm a mess chill. You and then the minute mess. the minute he left i literally collapsed and i literally almost couldn't breathe i was like oh, yeah. shaking i've <laughs> never seen so I much was, uh, yeah. so it was yeah it was it was terrifying. I mean, the I was minute he like, left, guys, the minute the minute the rhino turned and charged off, because the rhino like trotted off at a pretty good pace. We like kind of erupted into like a laughter of relief and looked at Mitch, and he was lying in the ground, convulsing with adrenaline. Like I'm not just saying yeah. that to be dramatic. Yeah. Like yeah. he was shaking. Nope. Like his hands were sure. just like this. It all just like he was convulsing with adrenaline, and it was it was awesome because. You know, we've all we, in our lives. We'll probably all be faced with some kind of situation like that. And there's two response, not with a rhino, but with some kind of situation where you, the fight or flight response will be triggered, right? And Mitchell right. stood his ground. He did not flee. He did not. He, if he had done that, I think not only would he have been killed, but the odds of many people being very injured in the situation would have been astronomical. You know, that rhino would have just gone gone bonkers. And, um, yeah, Mitch held his cool, and the second that rhino left, he just broke down with that adrenaline rush. And yeah. it was, honestly, it was the whole thing was just an incredible moment. It doesn't get cooler than that. Mitch, it's Mitch. too bad we cut it all out of the show. Yeah, <laughs> I was right. going to no. say, you make it uh, Mitch, though, I, I got a question that some of our uh, fans, we call them Brosners, have been asking. Okay, uh, all right. They want to know, you know, how, how did you, seeing it, this scary-ass story you're telling us, how did you, what made you want to get into, like, this, insane uh wildlife you know photography type job uh you know i i've always had a tremendous love for animals uh okay. and i've i love traveling yeah i love adve- i love adventure stuff so you know obviously doing the stuff that i do with forest is you know it makes sense that's unfortunately that's it's easier said than done like that job just <laughs> that doesn't come around every, you know every so often right you know, yeah you got to you got to yeah. blow a lot of people to get where you yeah, got. Yeah, I had to. He had to <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. So I, I was I was fortunate where I you know I was able to get I was able to you know be able to do this stuff with Forrest, but it's you know it's it's tough. Like yeah. it's it's not it's not one of those things. It's it's tricky. It's not you know you don't you don't look at it like it's like there cool. there are a lot of times that I'm working with Forrest that I I accept the fact that like this oh. it's something that I might die doing but (laughs) for sure but (laughs) at the end of the day you know at the end of the day i trust forrest i trust the people i work with i trust people like patrick who are there to make sure that i'm safe like you know i i'm trust i'm trustful in the process so i'm able to do these types of things but like i I, you know i don't know i don't i think there was a i when i started my career i didn't think i'd be doing what i'm doing now for sure like i thought i'd be I, you know, when I started, I was doing more of the like deadly job type shows like the Axe Men's and ah. Wicked Tuna and all those types of that, that type of stuff. And like, I never saw myself doing what I do with Forrest. And when I finally got to do what I do with Forrest, it was like, all right, that's it. I don't know. There's nothing else. I, yeah, yeah, nothing else guys, I'd how did do. you guys it's, it's all hard to, uh, come together? Through, uh, so the, when Extinct or Alive first yeah. came... To be uh, once the pilot got picked up to a, a season, we had a, a, a guy who was going out in the field and running the shoots because mm-hmm. um, I wasn't going out in the first season, and so uh, Mitch was someone that he had worked with a bunch. So the introduction yeah. was made through a third party, and then um, that guy moved on to do other stuff. And then Mitch and Forrest had already become friends, and Mitch was like the second cast member of the show at that point. So. <laughs> Still is, Just yeah. Made sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so real quick, Forrest, <laughs> yeah. you've been charged by a hippo, mm-hmm. right? Yep. What's the two two word thing that you do if you're charged by a hippo? Um, duck and dive. 
<laughs> okay, but don't don't you kind of zigzag because they yeah change that's what I mean duck poorly. and dive cry, like yeah you, cry you, and shit yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and shit yeah okay. no if you if you run in a straight line they are much faster than you but if you can kind of zigzag get behind something uh, well, one time I got behind a termite mound and that managed to let him continue going straight and not curve over to me so yeah that's you, you move okay. around <laughs> what if, what if a rhino charges you now Mitch was Mitch was way too close it would have been on him in a second right but what what if you're you know, what if you have enough, you're 50 feet away and a rhino starts charging you, what do you do? Um, best thing you can do is up a tree. So like when we were in that situation, Mitch had nothing to go up. Like you said, there were twigs. I literally had both my hands like up on this high branch ready to just do like a muscle up into the tree if he started coming. And I was like, you know, Mitch is a goner, so I'm gonna at least get up in this tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, we don't need multiple casualties. One is right. plenty. Right, right. One person's gonna die, whatever. Two and, people, and, that's, you know. Yeah, so yeah, so <laughs> yeah. with a hippo, you yeah, wanna kinda dying. zigzag, you know, with the rhino, they're they're much more maneuverable. And I hope nobody's in any of these situations ever, by the way. But <laughs> right. um, with a rhino, yeah, up a tree is the best that you can hope for. And it's funny because even while we were there, I don't, don't remember if you were there for this exact moment or not, Mitch, but the area we were has a lot of poaching incursions and a lot of rhinos getting killed. And there were a couple baby rhinos yeah. in an orphanage. And the guy went in to feed one. Oh, yeah, and yeah, the, was you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And the one baby rhino, I don't have the video, I'd send it to WT right, Willie. He started charging the guy in the cage and he like kind of ran around a tree and then jumped up into a tree and was Straight like up joking into the around tree. With it. Yeah. yeah. And this little rhino was like yeah. shaking his head trying to get the guy. And by the way, a yeah. little rhino <laughs> is not like you know, it's not like a little Labrador. Yeah, it's still it's, like it's still Volkswagen. like a six hundred pound animal that yeah. was chasing him around the pen. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, Speaking of hippos, uh Another another Brosner said that um, who had the idea of putting the hippo head on the boat? Shit was genius. One of their favorite <laughs> scenes. Oh, in the Madagascar. In Madagascar. Yeah, was it that Patrick, was good Patrick. I don't know who, whose idea was that. No, that was that was Forrest. I remember. I remember sitting at the same table I'm sitting at in my last house, and and having the conversation with Forrest before we went to Madagascar. And uh, him pitching that idea as something you wanted to do. <laughs> because what, basically, so the way the show gets made is Forrest does a fucking ton of work during the pre-production of, like, where do we go? What, what sure. can I do? And then it, there's a guy named Stephen Rockmail. Who, <laughs> the legend. A.K.A. The Rock. Yeah. The rock. A.K.A. The Rock, who uh, wears Hawaiian shirts every single day. <laughs> he's probably about 60. He has long hair from the 80s. But he's the best. He's yeah, amazing the, the at his best. job. Those guys, yeah. what, what are, they, what are the, the Kiss people? What are they called? Yeah, he's Kiss Army. Yeah, he's, he's Kiss, Kiss Army. Army. He's Kiss nice. Army yep. for life. Kiss yeah. Army. But so then we have to go to Stephen Rockmail and say, okay, so we need to get us <laughs> a toy boat and a fake hippo head to meet us in Madagascar. <laughs> Correct. And he's never once said why. Ever. No, never. <laughs> he's never questioned it. Ever. No. Yeah. He's just like, yep, he, I'll figure that out. <laughs> yeah. He, he knows He knows too well because the explanation is yeah. not worth it. He's like, oh, whatever. whatever. It's like the birthday <laughs> cake guy in, in that cave. Are you going to go, can you trek back? 20 miles to get a birthday cake. Oh, yeah, Mitch, we told that story about how you guys surprised me with the birthday cake in Vietnam in the cave. Oh, yeah, in the, middle of, in the middle of the cave in the middle of nowhere. That's hey, crazy. But before, we, before we get too far off the topic of hippos, there's an awesome piece of news that just came oh, out yeah. uh, yesterday that I absolutely Good. love. Um, so Patrick and Mitch, they both know this. Uh, I have this obsession with this single population of hippos. So Pablo Escobar, famed drug lord, when he was ruling Colombia, Ritep, mm -hmm, he brought mm -hmm. in the, I think it was something like eight hippos to Colombia to like live in the garden ponds of his ridiculous cocaine estate, right? <laughs> well, you know, hippos. Pablo Escobar got iced and eight hippos escaped in the, in the 1980s, right? Of course they In did. 2012, when the last kind of like official study was down, there was like 35 hippos living in the, in the Magdalena Basin, you know, which is a lot, like 35 yeah. hippos, you know, from eight, like they're breeding. But <laughs> this is what gets so crazy. That was the last time like a study was done, right? So as of like yesterday, 2020, um, they, went and did, they went and did some population estimates to see what's going on with these hippos. There's now somewhere between 85 and 90 living in this, like, 2,000-square-kilometer area. But where it gets even crazier what? is these animals. Yeah, so there's now, there's now like, 85, 90 of these hippos in Colombia. Um, but they, they don't have a natural predator, right? So their population is just growing exponentially. And it's estimated that um, 
In the next five to 10 years, their population could swell to be around 1,500 hippos, basically taking over the Amazon jungle from Pablo Escobar's like cocaine pets. Dude, All right, so here's dude, a wow. here's a bro here's a broologist question. How does that inf- how does that affect the natural species and natural way of life that things are there? You oh, if you huge. introduce if you introduce a hippo into the Amazon, how does that affect everything else that is there, like anacondas and caimans and yep, whatever yep. else? Well, first of all, we don't know because it's never been done before. It's never right? been, so, yeah, right. yeah. So all okay, we can do is take point. guesses. But you know, hippos are important to African ecology because they widen rivers, right? The way they move through rivers, it widens them. They pick and eat all the vegetation off the riverbanks. It makes rivers wider. Um, They're seed dispersers because they eat all this vegetation and then they do the little shit tail spin thing that we always talk about on this pod. So they're going to have some massive effects. You know, anacondas, caiman, uh, piranha, all these things don't know what the fuck a hippo is, right? And they're going to be stomping on them, and they're going to be... It's just, it's just like a, it's a mess. And when we think of invasive species, we think of like a rabbit or a snail or, or a cane toad or something. You're talking about these gargantuan hippos yeah. invading the Amazon and their population just being totally out of control because it, it's like, it's it's got to be hippo paradise, right? There's no lions, there's no, there's no elephants, there's no <laughs> crocodiles, there's nothing that could mess them up in any sh- way, shape, or form. Yeah. There's unlimited food, uh, like there's what? like an incredible incredible environment it's 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 hippo heaven well and think about this nuts. too no predators the in the wild the unchecked the average female hippo will have 15 to 20 offspring during her life wow right? so that right. is think about an exponential growth yep yeah if that's every female wild. that's alive now has 15 to 20 hippos and then each of them have 15 to 20 hippos you're talking about this exponential growth of yeah. the hippo population with tons of food and no predators. In a pretty yep. small area, too. You said, like, just two people. I mean, they're just going to keep it. Yeah, it's just going to yeah. keep growing and growing, too. But, you know, this is Christ. this is a 4,000-pound animal that, you know, everybody knows this. Like, I, I think is the most terrifying animal, yeah. basically, in the world when you come to face-to-face with one. Like, they're going to cause havoc. Yeah. Like, they are going to be a real problem at this point. So something is going to have to be done by the Colombian government, I'm sure. But it just the whole story is just wacky. I mean, just drug, cocaine, hippos, and, uh, and exponential <laughs> right, so overtake. I mean, it's just, it's just wild. Yeah. So, well, so I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Peter. No, I just said it is. That's it. Oh, <laughs> so it here's something I'd like to talk about while we have Mitch on. Yeah. So we did one of our, for those of you listening on iTunes, we do uh, the podcasts or videos. You can watch them on YouTube. We do a daily video every day with different topics. One of the ones we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago, it's one of our dailies, was when we explored uh, Sandong Cave in Vietnam, the yep. biggest cave in the world. There's a rainforest in the middle of it. Crazy enough, I was one of the nights we were camping inside the cave. I was sleeping in a oh, tent boy. next to Mitch. <laughs> and very hard to sleep because the sound reverberates in this cave and you could just, you know, there was, we had us, we had uh, the porters that were helping carry some of the gear. And so you hear snoring, you hear every noise. If someone rolls over in their, their sleeping bag, you hear it. Yeah. Brutal, brutal to fall asleep. I finally <laughs> fall asleep like a couple hours before we had to get up. <sighs> I'm in a deep slumber and all of a sudden I hear a scream. <laughs> and I wake up, I, I dart this. up, and it, I realize that someone is attacking our director of photography, Mitch, in the yeah. tent next to me. That's what? What, that's, what was hap- that's what was happening. He's yeah. screaming, get the fuck out. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of my tent. <laughs> but so screaming I, it. Screaming. Like bloody so, murder. So I reach, I frantically, in the pitch black dark, I'm feeling around, I grab my buck knife, <laughs> out of my pack uh, and I start to unzip my tent and then a light flicks on and I can see it through the side of my tent and it's in Mitch's tent and I just see his silhouette and he's sitting up in his tent. So I'm seeing his silhouette through my tent and through his tent and then I just hear him go, (sighs) he had what is called a night terror. Oh, wow. Wow. I thought. Have you heard of this recept? Do you know what a a a night terror is? For Tep, have I you heard of this? So, night terror? Oh yeah. I don't know if it's night. I don't know if it's night terror or there's another thing called parasomnia that I think I might have, but it's it's basically one of those things where you you come out of a dream, you know, you fall asleep, you're having a dream, you come out of that dream, and there's like a there's like a minute to minute and a half span where 
you think it's still happening, but it's reality. You know, so sure. in my in my dream, in my dream that night where Patrick was sleeping right next to like I was in my tent, he was in the one next to me. In my dream, there was a bunch of I don't know why, but there was a bunch of children attacking me. And I was I, I was <laughs> freaking out. Like they By were the literally way, like if, coming if at Mitch me with knives like I'm gonna kill people. you. I just yeah. They were like it was like a it was like a you're gonna die type situation with children. They were gonna kill me. <laughs> right. So I'm screaming, I'm screaming, get the fuck out! Like just thinking, like I don't want to attack anyone, but if I just verbally just assault these children, then they'll they'll go away. Right? Meanwhile, this is like, I'm screaming, wow, I'm screaming, get the the fuck out. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some porters that are still telling this story to this day. <laughs> and like what's you. so funny right. from my perspective, Ritap, is like I've known Patrick a long time. He's not a good sleeper, right? Oh, He's, yeah. He has to have been a nightmare of a baby. So <laughs> yes. for, have Mitch on one end of the tent <laughs> and like Patrick two tents, you know, over and just Mitch is like screaming bloody murder with his night terrors and Patrick, I assume, is just quivering in fear <laughs> holding his, uh, oh, his no. buck knife. <laughs> I'm an adrenaline guy, man. Like I, I'm yeah, like... Yeah, true, true, so, true. No, yeah, you're there not was an nervous. earthquake. <laughs> there was an earthquake once you Years ago, I was at an ex's place sleeping, and we went through a pretty big earthquake in L.A., and the door to the room was rattling. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, I go from dead sleep to, like, running to, <laughs> running to the door and, like, opening the door with my fist cocked because I didn't realize it was an earthquake. <laughs> and, like, for two years, she was like, yeah, you're fucking nuts. Like, you need help. <laughs> well, you let's not forget problem. the earthquake that we all experienced in yeah, Ecuador. I was, was going to say, whole, Patrick, yeah. you, oh, Patrick, yeah. Patrick did not react that way during the earthquake in Ecuador because during that one. He didn't react at all. You, you. I'm pretty sure the entire earthquake. I watched you, and you, you didn't miss a sip out of your. It was like, no, he, he was, was a, taking like a it was like, an orange, sip. it was like a vodka yeah. orange juice or something that literally not a single drop like came out. It was like. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my yeah, favorite yeah. shaking like that anyway. My favorite part of that was the, <laughs> the was cook or great. the guy behind the bar that barged through the the, the two way door and just <laughs> flattened you, Mitchell, the, and then the literally kitchen, ran the over your back to get out of the building. And the, we were just looking at each other like, "What's he doing?" This is like the, the entire the entire place is rattling, and I'm casually like, "Oh, this is probably not good." I'm casually drinking like, and this guy comes out of nowhere, busts out of the kitchen, hits the door. Knocks me out of the way. I, my drink goes flying. I'm like, what the hell? People are frantic. Everybody's running around like it's the end of the world. Meanwhile, like Patrick and I are just in the in the bar, like drinking. Like, what the hell is everybody so like concerned about? Like, it's an earthquake, <laughs> yes, but like, why the hell is everyone like? And like, honestly, like the scariest part of that entire situation for me. Wasn't the fact that it was like a, I don't even know like a seven point whatever earthquake it was a, or a sev, seven point five yeah seven point five big one. massive big yeah. one it was a seven point five earthquake it was actually like it was the first time in my life where like you could walk you could literally look around and see things shaking and moving oh yeah it was that it was that bad but it, what scared me the most of the entire situation wasn't wasn't the fact that it was an earthquake and we could we could die it was everyone else it was everyone else's reaction like people you know, just, you know what scared me the most they freaked the fuck oh, out and it was just like yeah. I, like patrick and i were just like drinking like guys it's an earthquake like until like shit's falling out of the ceiling like let's just all Mitchell, stay calm you, you like, literally relax reached like, over yeah. the bar and helped yourself to a drink when it happened <laughs> you did, <laughs> you did. Yeah, the bartender you did. the bar the bartender left and i was like all right well thank you <laughs> I, yeah. I want to tell you real quick what scared me the most about that situation. I think Patrick's going to back me up here. Is who took charge? Do you remember who took charge when we yes. left? Oh, well, that's the what lounge? I was just about to say. It was yeah, the guy please. who worked at the chicken stand. Yeah, at the at the, <laughs> at the KFC stand. The guy got up on top of his like KFC cart and was like, "Everybody, calm down!" and started like directing people where to go. Well, thinking. he was just saying leave. He was like, "Leave the airport," and we're sitting in the lounge. <laughs> And we're the like, guy no. comes in. No. <laughs> all the employees have left. And so we're like, okay. So we just started pouring more drinks naturally. And then uh, the chicken guy comes in and he's like telling us to leave. Get the fuck out of here. And Forrest yeah. just goes, he's like, you know, in Spanish, he's basically like, thank you, thank you. And the guy's like, no, like leave. And he's like, 
Sorry, chicken man, we're not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy worked in the chicken cart. Like, he was not taking charge of that situation. <laughs> no, there was, we, we were about to board an eight-hour flight, yeah. and we had a lot of drinking to do. We just, we just found the Fernandina Island tortoise. Yeah. This was our one chance to celebrate before we got on a plane. Nobody had slept. We were like, we're going to have five or six screwdrivers and act like gentlemen. That's right. And, and no 7.5 earthquake's going to stop that from happening. <laughs> Was your flight Mitch. delayed? Oh, yeah. oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. It was, well, so then eventually someone came and basically told us we'd be arrested if we didn't go out under the tarmac. <laughs> yeah, that's, and so that's basically what happened. Forrest yeah. pu- pulls out his uh, JBL Bluetooth speaker and Correct. starts blasting techno yeah. music. <laughs> tr- and it's, still, it's so vibe. early in the morning, it's pitch black. Oh, and yeah. we had yeah. been traveling from the Galapagos to mainland Ecuador. No, literally, we were like, we'd been up for like 36 hours straight. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're like, we've, we're like double fisting screwdrivers on the tarmac, <laughs> pitch black, like Point dancing. And I'm sure that's why everyone hates Americans. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you and Ariana Grande it. licking donuts. <laughs> it was, we had a good time. Mitch, let me ask you, do, you, do you like your job working with Patrick and I and traveling around the world? Uh, no. The, the no, I'm serious. Pause. Do you like it? Like, is this something you you recommend to somebody? Brosners are people are always hitting me up. You know, how do I do what you do? How do how do I get involved? Blah blah blah. But I swear, probably the number two, number three question I get is. I want to be the next Mitch. Like, I want to be the guy behind the camera that comes with. How do I get there? Do, does he love it? Does he hate it? Like, what's the story? How do you feel it, about it? It's, I mean, it's, there's no, if I could tell you a, a specific formula to get to where I've been, I would. The problem is, is that I can't. You know, I, one, every, every person's life is different than the next. You, I made decisions that led me to, one person that led me to this job that led me to, Forrest and Patrick and now I get to do this kind of stuff it's not as simple as just being like well if you go to college here and you do this then you'll get to do this one day it, it doesn't really work like that the, the best advice I can give anyone if they really want to do what I do they really want to travel and shoot animals is just just go start doing it just go just go be that yeah. person you know like I, I yep. my whole thing was I for a long time I was I was doing Axemen and Wicked Tuna and Iceberg Truckers, all these different, diff- you know, all these different shows. And for the longest time, I was just doing these domestic type, base, you know, white, you know, blue collar type shows. Like and that was, shows. That, yeah, these reality shows, and that was that was fine. But the minute my career transformed from being that type of person to travel was when I I did it for myself, you know. So I started going on three month long trips to Europe and I would backpack all over Europe and take all kinds of videos and shoot all kinds of different things and I would go to South America and shoot all kinds of different things. And then eventually I just became known as the travel guy and like, oh well if you want to travel, you know, Mitch is your guy. So my like my recommendation if like if somebody re- if somebody is watching this and they're like, I want to do what you do, my recommendation would be just go do it. Just sure. Sh- Start the career. Just go out and but you start love it. started it's, start being in a you know started start going on adventures and filming these different things and filming animals and then eventually, if you become good enough at it, someone will recognize that and hire you. I I was fortunate sure. where I I knew some people that knew some people that you know through through one person to another person I I eventually met Forrest and Patrick so I I was fortunate but. If that's not always the case, you know. It's I, but my recommendation would be, just go do it. Just go be that person is it, that is it travels. Rewarding? And is it is it fulfilling to be able to do the kind of work you do with a camera and and go where you go? I'm serious. Like all jokes it's, aside, it's it's the most rewarding career I think anyone could ask for. I mean, you know, for me, I you know I love animals. I love traveling. So to be able to travel and shoot animals and not i mean not only that but like the, that's great but the biggest thing for me is being able to do that with people that i genuinely love being around and love working with. <laughs> can deal yeah. with you know? yeah yeah like, you yeah, know, yeah. like i no like that's, forest, well, that's forest that. and i like i might i might spar to kick i like you might spar to kick me into a pool <laughs> into in a vietnam pool. but yeah at the end of the day like if you watch that video closely 
scroll if you scrub that video i get sparta kicked into that pool and the minute i come up i'm smiling and it's because it's it's at the end of the day it's just fun like no matter yeah, yeah, yeah. no matter no matter how mad you get how angry no matter frustrated it doesn't matter at the end of the day you are traveling the world with some of your best friends doing a job that people would 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 kill to do you know so it's it, funny it's extremely for, fortunate you know that's awesome, Mitch. I just went for a run before we started recording. And as I was running, I don't know what, you know, your mind wanders when you're just jogging, right? Mm-hmm. Like you start thinking about shit, whatever. And I started thinking about the audio that got leaked of Tom Cruise freaking out on the yes. uh, crew on yeah. Mission Impossible and screaming at them. I'll have you fired and like blah, blah, blah. Fuck yeah. and, and I was thinking about, I was like, those guys probably make more money than I do. Whoever's getting screamed at on Mission Impossible 17. Sure. But I was like, just the thought of someone treating me or someone else on mm-hmm. a, a set that mm-hmm. I was on that way and, and that being the culture and that being, and you're, you're making just this movie that, yeah, people will enjoy. They'll spend two hours of their lives watching, but like, that's not gonna inspire anyone to do nope. anything. Sure. You're just nope. gonna zone out and go, that's cool. And I was thinking like, how does it get to a point where that's okay on a set and that's well, how people act? Well, I could I could answer that. No, I could answer that a little bit. Go ahead, go ahead, ahead. Tom Cruise. You know, here we are. Mitch is telling us how he loves his career and it's the most awe-inspiring, you know, passionate (laughs) thing that he could do, and it's fulfilling and rewarding. And he, uh, you know, he loves to work with these good people. I don't know who they are. Patrick, you're, uh, you know, in a sense, we're all friends. Let's be honest here. But in a sense, you know, you 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 are and have been Mitch's boss on certain projects. Um, Sure. How would you feel if you knew that? You know, your camera op maybe didn't treat his equipment particularly nicely. Would you be upset by that? WT Willie, would you uh, pull up a little clip I sent you earlier today? So <laughs> yes. what I've got here is some leaked footage similar to said Tom Cruise footage. Okay, now in, of, in full disclosure, I don't actually know what you're about to show. No, I know you don't. You've never okay. seen this. Oh God, this, this is this is, is all, I'm not kidding. This is this is the real deal. This is big time. So I suggest yeah. you go full Let's screen, see. Patrick, little plus in the top right hand sure, corner. Sure, sure. For those yeah. of you listening at home, I kind of forgot we were doing a podcast. This is <laughs> Never before seen footage of Mr. Director of Photography Mitchell Long, aka the Tom Cruise of reality television. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not going to say more because I want Patrick to see this for the first time. Okay. I want him to see where his hard earned dollars and equipment go. So, uh, okay. we'll make sure the audio's on and uh, let's run it back. Okay, this is. He just wanted to be a baker. So what we've just seen is uh, that's the Bahamas. Look at how beautiful it is too. That back. Correct. I was gonna say. So what we've just seen is a beautiful video Uh. someone filmed on their cell phone of Mitch and Forrest arguing, and then Mitch spikes a camera into the ground and then throws it into the sand. My presumption, because I know you guys too well is that that camera had already shit its pants. <laughs> Very well. Very <laughs> that well camera done, was sir. bricked, and you guys are dickheads. <laughs> right. Very so well done, the, sir. Very the, well done. The, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, that camera had been used in Borneo. Uh, oh, two shit. Weeks. Yeah, this is the truth about So it was full of happened. bees? <laughs> the whole car drive was, was full of bees? All right, so... On, on most episodes of Extinct or Alive, Patrick, you know, Forrest, you know, but on most episodes of Extinct or Alive, we like to we like to send Forrest out with a personal diary cam. That oh, way yeah. he can film himself, <laughs> do his own thing, blah, blah, blah. So we always have, like, a handy cam-looking thing where he can film himself, right? Forrest like a nice and I, 4K, you yeah, know, good, it's, but, but it's compact you know, camera. Mm-hmm. Decent camera, right? So Forrest and I are in Borneo, and him and I, like, you know, before, like, one night late, He's like, hey, do you want to get up early, like, 3 a.m. with me and go out and, like, look for a monkey? You know, look for the langer, which is the Miller's Grizzler langer, which we ended up finding mm. on Exchange July. We ended up, he wanted to go out one early morning and look for that, you know, that langer. So we go out early one morning. We head out into the woods, and he, you know, we set up this whole, like, base camp-like looking thing. Blind. Yeah, a blind. Right. Yeah, sorry. So he's kept this whole blind, and Forrest, Forrest has his. I'm I'm filming Forrest, right? So there's no reason Forrest should have 
film themselves. I got my camera. I have a red, you know, Narcissist. really nice filming him. Anyways, at some point, Forrest is like, oh, I think I want to do some, like, diagram stuff. In case, like, we don't want to use the footage. Like, what, what if I'm just most <laughs> Whatever. So he's got his diary cam. And I'm, like, doing something else. And he's got his diary cam out. He's filming himself. Oh, look at me. Like, I'm just, and all of a sudden, I hear, like, a thud. And I, like, pan my head over. And Forrest is just sitting there like, oh, sorry, nothing <laughs> happened. And I'm like, what, what, was that, what was that thud I heard? And he's like, that was nothing. I'm like, where did the camera go? And he's like, I, I, he's like, I, I dropped the camera. And so Forrest and I had, we had positioned ourselves like in a high spot, looking down at this area where we thought these, these monkeys or langers would come into this one specific area. So he, we had picked a specific spot, but it was the up block. on a cliff above a bunch of stuff and then above going down was like yep. probably like 20 feet and it just led down mm-hmm. to a creek mm-hmm. so Forrest is filming himself I'm doing something else and all of a sudden I hear a thud thud I look back and he's sitting there like <laughs> nothing happened <laughs> and I'm like yeah. where did the camera go and he was like what camera and I'm like the camera I just <laughs> handed you like where did it go and he was like I don't I don't know like what what do you it's mean gone. what camera I'm like, Forrest, I literally, like, two minutes ago, I handed you a camera. I said, film yourself if you want to. I have my camera here. And when I turn back now, all of a sudden there's no camera. And you're sitting here giving me a blank stare. And so I, I peer over the side of this cliff. And about 30 feet down in a giant pool of water is my camera. Just sitting, like, destroyed in a camera. And I look at him, I'm like... <laughs> Are you kidding me? Drop like, it down there, you dumbass. Like, uh, How did you do that? Like he, <laughs> hit yourself in the face. He, he basically he was filming himself, and then he was done, and he put it on his backpack, and then he moved, and it just like tumbled down the whole thing, yeah. landed in Mitchell. this pool of water, and I was just like, you know, I'm gonna get shit for this, like Patrick, like they're all gonna be mad, like we just destroyed a camera, and he was just like, <laughs> eh, like whatever, just pull the car. Oh, he's. That's the thing that a lot of people don't realize about Forrest is that when you guys are in the field or when we're all in the field together and there's a problem from back home, he's just like, fuck them, fuck it, let's go. Like, where it's like, uh, guys, we have a plane that it's going to be like 15 grand if we miss this flight. He's like, I don't give a shit, let's go. <laughs> Mission critical. I get pretty focused. <laughs> yeah, Mitch, do which you, is really you have to do. Man. Do you yeah, think, it's Mitch? Fun. Who could you beat up, Patrick Deluca? The, the people want to know who would win in a fight between. Who, who's actually asked this? Anyone, Retap, or yeah, just you? No, Usually. nobody guy has who, asked this. The guy ever. who put an ad in the newspaper <laughs> about the Wild Times wants to know. <laughs> Matt McHugh. Who McHugh? would win? McHugh? Who would win a fight between who? Me you, and Mitch, you and Pat, who would win? Who would win? Oh, Pat, Patrick, for sure. Really? Here, here's what I'd say. Mitch is know. younger. He's probably more athletic and angrier. Very athletic. You guys look like uh, brothers, actually. So it, it would it would be tough. It'd be a tough one for both of us. Uh, hey, what is fight. Ashley doing? What is what is your fiance doing there, Mitch? She's clinking and clanking a lot. She just walked up into the. She oh, she stopped. She's she's just walking up the stairs now. Patrick's she, anxiety is going through the roof. Is she, every wait, time is she mad at me now that I said that? <laughs> she's <laughs> great. She's literally like. She looked at me like I'll kill Patrick. If he's yeah. Right. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations well, there on that, your, there goes that wedding invite. Yeah. Congratulations <laughs> on your recent engagement, Mitch. That's pretty Thanks. cool. Yeah. Hey. Also, <laughs> by the way, very underrated thing to say is that. When you do what Mitch or Forrest or I or anyone does, you have to find a significant other that's okay with you just being like, so right. yeah, to cool which is not to easy. Africa that's for not, three months. That's not easy. It's not yeah, easy. Yeah, for sure. Not. Ritep will well, never I, have to do that because he 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 sits his supple ass in a chair all no, day long. Yeah. He's never left. I, I, I go around the block. I, I jog occasionally. Uh, and, and Taco she, Bell. And Jess is a saint, so Forrest doesn't count. Because it's insane. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. 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 Oh, Forrest, Forrest, so, Forrest so, do you have a girlfriend? So, so, so. I do, yeah. Very serious oh. one. Oh, nice. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys. By the way, happy Monday, everybody. I want to say something that's very important. Mitch, this will be your mm. first time hearing it. Okay. It's time. Oh, boy. Ooh, it's time. 
What's the time for? Battle Forest? Royale. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We don't have a sound effects budget, Mitch, in case you couldn't tell. Let's so we just have them. actually come down well, and jingle some I, glasses. Why wouldn't I be able to tell after that? All right, we're going back to the old school style battle royale. People okay. fucking love the battle royale. It's great. Uh, if someone could stop stirring Mitch at your house, that would be fucking great. <laughs> no one, uh, no one's doing. Is she using a mortar and pestle to make like a homemade <laughs> mint julep? No, no hammer to you guys. Well, there is some. Is, it, is she is calling it like a clink? cat? The guy like clinking the guy a dish, dish, clicking a pen through forty Here, I episodes. Can, I can, you want to? You want? You really want to see what it is? Hold on, ready? Oh, sure. God. For those on YouTube, Mitch will now show us. Okay. What, is, what is it? I'm seeing a TV. Okay. The oh, dog. It's, I see. It's a dog <laughs> licking ah. its ball. An adorable dog. All right. So here we go. Here's the scenario, guys. Old school, classic battle royale. Snake draft. Mitch is gonna Great. go last because we'll give him some time okay. to settle in. Makes All right. sense. Here's Great. what you're gonna do. You've got to pick. You get three choices. Okay. You've got to pick legs or so mobility. How does this thing get around? What does its body look like? And what does its head look like? Okay. Right? So you got legs, body, head. Three different animals that exist. Not extinct animals. Okay. You have to. Here's your challenge. You have to build a creature that is insanely adorable. It's the nice. cutest animal you can think of. But, but when it gets angry, it is also terrifying. Mm, the so, old gremlin saga. Yeah, boy. So you've got to go. find a really cute animal, but if it gets angry... It turns into a gremlin, and you are fucking terrified of this thing. Three parts. Three animal yep. parts. Yep, okay. three animal parts. Legs head, body, or legs. arms. Yep, head, body, legs. Yep. All right, Forrest, since you're the broologist, I'm going to challenge you with going first so that Retep can Google some things. Smart. And Mitch can stop stirring his uh, Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, okay. I like this game. I like this game. I am going to go. I'm going to start this off with the body. The okay. body parts. Okay. Cute body, um, cute body. Yep, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna base this on an experience that Mitchell and I had in Borneo, where we rescued the cutest animal I've ever seen, the slow Laris. But okay. when we tried to take it out of its little enclosure to let it go, it turned into the most terrifying gremlin creature that I've ever seen. <laughs> so that's not my answer in total, but I've experienced sure. this. So uh -huh. I'm going with the body and venom that the slow Laris has in its little claws. Or no, no, it's in its in its teeth, isn't it? Mm, that's saliva. Yeah, yeah. Not, gonna, not gonna be very scary without that venom boy. That's true. Saliva that's very and fur. True. It's in its fur. Fur. No, no, I'm I'm good. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm just gonna go to the head because I need the venom. So that adorable little face that WT Willie has pulled up there on our on our YouTube, I'm gonna go with the head of a slow Laris. Okay. okay. Uh, so okay. Forrest okay. took okay. essentially the cutest head of an animal. Yeah. It's except for one. <laughs> It's kind of bullshit, but whatever. Which is yeah. my, it's, since I'm going next. Uh, Forrest, you did a good job. You picked the second cutest animal head. Thank I'm going to pick the cutest animal head. Damn it. The most kissable animal head, mm. where you just can't Me? help yourself. Even if it's someone else's pet, you would just kiss it right <laughs> on the lips. <laughs> I'm going to take the adorable head of a dick dick. Ooh, a very dick cute. Dick. Very a dick cute. Dick. For those of you who don't know what a dick dick is, treat, there's no treat, C in that, yourself. Retep. When you're Googling, there is no C in yeah, that it's word. D -I -K -D -I -K. Yeah, it's D-I-K, D-I-K. Uh, I'm going to take it. It's probably what? Yeah. Oh, there, okay. There's the Loris. Look at that dick dick head on it's, YouTube for those of you. It's very it, cute, but definitely not dangerous in any way, shape, or form. I will compensate for that with my head and arms. So yeah, my head right. is the adorable little horned head with the big eyes of a dick it's, it's dick. It's gorgeous. Well, That's nice. Um, Retep, you're up. One pick. Forrest definitely stole my slow Loris, which is fucking annoying. You didn't know what that what? was until seven you're, minutes ago. You were going to do a slow Loris? I, that was dude, your, that Forrest was has talked about a slow Loris and how cute it is and venomous yeah, like true. 30 times on this podcast. I should have known. That's but true. That's true. I cannot yeah. pick that or a dick dick. I will be picking the cutest animal head in existence, and that's Mitch's head. My animal will have Mitch's head. God, he does this every time. I, we know, and the body uh, of herpes. And we the know body of herpes, and yeah. fucking no, Ebola no, for Mitch the legs. Mitch is very cute. Very <laughs> wow. cute. Wow. Okay. All yeah. right. 
You're, yeah. you're an utter buffoon. So, Mitch, you play fantasy <laughs> football. You know what a snake draft is. So yep. you're up for two picks. So two of your three, legs, body, head, what are you going to go with? Wait, so what do, I, what do I have to pick first? Head? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Any Just of whatever three. you right. are worried someone else might steal from you in this challenge. All right. All right. I'm taking, of all the things Forrest and I have done, animal-related, the cutest little thing I can think of that would be my the head of the cutest thing would be the Galapagos fur seal oh, oh that's, a, that's a power pick you we'll know. pull off a picture you has gotta be a picture I I literally yeah. had one holding he was literally weighing down my tripod I was I was I was trying to film on the Galapagos here, here Islands of Fernandina I, I gotcha that, can you do a screen share hold on that, look, oh, that look at that thing, uh, he, those little things. That thing that's is just, where, this is my background. Just I don't know if you guys are getting the screen share. That's, nice. that's that's my background of Mitch's Imagine, picture. That's that's Mitch, cool. you took that one, right? Yeah. That's the one. That's, that's it. So just a quick ten second aside, when Forrest was uh, found the uh, Fernandina Island tortoise, we were mm-hmm. on an island called Fernandina Island, which is the most protected of the Galapagos Islands. Yep. Most of the animals there have never seen a human being. Oh, right. So they didn't. They just thought we were part of their yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, they could not have been less like cautious of us. Much like Mitch's dog currently is <laughs> licking his face. Like we were, we were just swimming around. Just these yeah. pups were just playing with us. One Amazing. of the coolest moments of my life. I will never forget it. Mitch, Very what's cute. your next pick? You Great got the pick. head of a first Great seal. Pick. What's yeah, your that's, next a, pick? that's a and then pick. The, then the, the body or what? What do I go next to the body or whatever you like? Up body or you. legs doesn't matter. To you, pal. You're hammered. But remember, when it gets mad, it has to be really fucking scary. Right. You gonna get skipped? I, honestly, an, an animal that I've always been just—I don't know why—but I've been terrified of is a uh, is like a, a like a gorilla, or like a silverback gorilla from the Congo, like a really pissed off. This is your off. adorable pick. Okay. No, the, no this is have, a scary no, no, no. pick. This is yeah, scary pick. Okay. okay. The body adorable. of a silverback. Literally face face no, of a Galapagos a face. Okay. A face of a Galapagos fur seal with the body. <laughs> Of a silverback gorilla. <laughs> I love okay. it. He's I going like down it. My path, baby. That's right. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the it's, cutest goddamn thing I could ever think. When of you right see that now. thing from far away, you're gonna think it got decapitated, and then you get up on it, and you're like, God damn, it's <laughs> cute. <laughs> yeah, I want to just tickle its up. chin. All right, very nice. Up. Very nice. What Retap are you up. going to pair okay. with the Mitch's head? That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so so the body of my animal is going to be uh, this. Uh, it's one of the cutest fucking animals in the world, but if you fuck with it, it will literally destroy you and and claw your fucking face off. Mm-hmm. Stone right. house cat, Persian baboon, house cat. You're going with Persian, that house cat. You're going with a Persian house cat. <laughs> yep, very cute body. <laughs> Mitch's head on a Persian house cat, and this oh, is the God. cutest thing Brosters, you can come up with. If you want to create of, a of rendition of all the of creatures this. on Earth, the cutest thing you can come up with so far is Mitch's head on a Persian house cat's body. Look at how fucking cute! <laughs> it almost <laughs> already looks like Mitch completely. <laughs> See, here's here's my concern. This is freakish. This this no. can't be cute. A human head kidding? on a cat's body <laughs> is disgusting. Heavy. People are gonna stomp on it. No way. I mean, not not Mitch's head. They they did it in the new Wonder Woman movie. It didn't work <laughs> out. It didn't work out. <laughs> it didn't work out. All right. It didn't so do good. you're up. It didn't do good. Papa P, you're up. I've got a Dick Dick's head. <laughs> you do. It's already so cute that everyone fans. who sees it is gonna go, "That's the cutest." Okay. Now okay. I've got to make it scary. I'm gonna skip the body and wait a pick. And I'm going to okay. go with the legs, mm, okay. the mobility of a giant Pacific octopus. Oh, now, wow, there here's we go. why. Okay. I get eight of them. Each okay. leg has 240 suckers. We all know this. Each sucker has a beak in it. So it's super cute. It's got the dick dick's head. But if it gets mad, you now have eight very large Legs with 240 suckers each to deal I with. I don't know if you're keeping the cute points there, man. That's pretty yeah, slimy. It's pretty cute. 
Okay. It's, 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 it's dry. It's dry. Okay. It's, it's hard. Dry. All right. Fair it's enough. Hard yeah, hard one. I'm All pretty right, sure. I'm pretty sure my fur seal slash gorilla tears the shit out of your. Well, these aren't combating animals. That's oh. not this game. Just so yeah. you know. Well, they're combating in that. The the Brosners are going to vote, and whoever loses has to shotgun five beers on the next podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you might have to combating. make another guest appearance, Mitch. Um, All right, Forrest, okay. you're up for two Very more. Good. Very good. I'm up for two. So I have the undeniably adorable head of a slow Loris, and I'm I'm trying to keep this thing as mm. as mogwai as I can, as cute and fluffy and adorable as I can. But boy, don't get it wet because it's going to rip you to shreds. Don't feed it after midnight unless you're a lunatic. All right. Exactly. Right. Right. exactly. So I'm putting the head of my slow Loris on the body of what, the seemingly adorable giant river otter. Now, when you look at a giant river otter, you're like, wow, it's cute. It's slender. It's got this incredible physique. You try. I am telling you people, the most difficult, terrifying creature on Earth to try and wrangle or deal with is a pissed off otter. The way their spines are like wet noodles and they can just fucking maneuver. Uh, all mustelids, all weasel family can just maneuver in any direction at any Boy. time. That thing will rip you to Shreds. Okay. And aren't they aren't they like rapists, right? Aren't, aren't are. otters are. like real Rivers. pieces of shit? Mostly sea otters, but um, but you know, they, yeah, they, there's a tinge of rape in there. You know, we won't we won't really push that on air, but yeah, it's, it's a little tinge. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. So Forrest, you have the body of a sea otter. Yep. The head of a slow loris. Yeah. What? How? What's? How's it going to get around? This cute, now this creature, scary animal. this this adorable thing that you look at and go, oh, I want one, is going to have the features, the the mobility features of a cassowary. Uh, so you're gonna look at this thing. You're like, it's so cute. It's adorable. It's got this cylindrical body. These eyes that are incredible. And then it's just gonna kill you in every fucking aspect. It's got the head of a slow loris packed with venom. Incurable, the body of a giant river otter, so it can just move all around you and just rip you to shreds. And then the ta- the, the the talons of <laughs> of a cassowary, so it'll cute. just gut you like a fish when it's upset. And yeah, there you yeah, go, those guys, cute. those, those four are of those. Disgusting. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. The pro- yeah. The problem here is that you've built an abomination. I have. <laughs> it I is have. not cute. You can't just slap a cute head on a <laughs> two giant pterodactyl legs. <laughs> this and is the hard. body of a river otter. It's a mess. This it's is the hardest battle for you. royale we've ever done, we'll in my see. opinion. We this will is see. like we fucking will with see. my head. <laughs> I feel good about this. I feel All good. Right. So okay. Forrest has that thing. Mine I makes do. a lot more sense. So I've got the tiny, adorable horned head of a dick dick. Yep. dick, dick. I've got eight very powerful, giant Pacific octopus legs. Okay. So I've got, I've got my it's scary thing taken care of. Because when those legs and arms come to life, you're in big, big trouble. So I need I to give it a really cute body. Here's my body that I'm going to give it. Mm-hmm. What's the hallmark sign of a cute body of an animal? You want to give it a little... You want to get fluffy. You want to give it a little scratch on the belly, right? Yeah. A hamster. <laughs> you don't scratch a hamster. They will bite you, sir. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take the body of a very young puppy... French bulldog. Well, a little wrinkly, okay. Okay. chubby, little, little pup body. A little wrinkly, wow. chubster. And you think mine's an abomination. You have a French bulldog with octopus arms coming out of it. That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like, I'm picturing the way it this would sleep on the couch is it would tuck its arms underneath the little body, and it, you kind of wouldn't see that until it's okay. angry, and then it goes, <sighs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I yeah, won. That. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay you Ritep. think you did. You think you did. The brosters well, will let us this know. Is so, Ritep, utter... you've got Mitch's head on yeah. a cat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so this is an utter mess. Uh, you, all of your animals are nonsense. And Except I, yours. I just, I made Except a, yours, of course. I made a mistake, though, in my description. So I said that my, you know, my cat would, or my Mitch head cat body, but I explained that it, the claws would be very sharp. So it's the mobility of the cat, right? Of Fair the Persian enough. cat. We'll okay, give you that. We'll give we'll, you we'll that. that. So you've got that. the legs of a cat. So the legs of a cat, so to speak. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the body then is going to be that of one of the cutest animals, but very dangerous to touch, a porcupine. That's right. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. So Mitch's head on a porcupine oh, body with Persian cat feet. Okay. I think that's cute. I think I've just brought it home. Are you going to try uh, pet it? 
You're going to try and pet that? You could scratch it under its uh, chin. Uh, I'm just uh, saying. You don't want to make it angry. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about petting it. <laughs> because here, here's <laughs> my problem. Ratep, you have no cute factor. You have a what human head, Mitch which is, is off-putting. Cute. He's the cute factor. <laughs> this is... I mean, we're not in eighth grade. I'm not talking about yeah. how cute Mitch is. <laughs> well, I am. So fuck off. <laughs> yeah, apparently. All right, Mitch, okay. what do you want to add to your abomination? I saw... Yeah. I'm confused. So I have the I have the head of a fur seal. You yep. do. Cuteness of a fur seal. Good, good pick. And right. I have the silverback gorilla features <laughs> what? The body, body, I believe. The is body. Right. But you don't body have any legs, legs yet. You have no legs. legs and arms on this thing. <laughs> Oh, you have no it's, appendages, it's, man. Giraffe. Done. <laughs> Boom. Wow. That is a top heavy creature. All right. <laughs> Boom. This Literally first seal, giraffe. Gr- yeah, first seal, giraffe, <laughs> and silverback, silverback gorilla. Yeah, Done. you're that's, so that's, tanked. Yeah, that's, the, that's, a, that's, a, that's an animal you, you lose 11 times out of 10. I hope a Milky Way of Life decides to uh, bring these creatures to the big screen and build them like she used to in the early days of the oh pod because God. these will be unbelievable. So let's run strange. it back. Yeah. Let's yeah. run it back. Go ahead okay, Grossners, look, thing. we need your help. This might be the hardest battle royale in the history of battle royales. It's all over the place. It was a challenge. We're, Very challenging. It's a hell of a challenge. <laughs> what we're trying to do here is create... The Mogwai slash Gremlin, the, the the creature that up close or from far is adorable, but if you piss it off, it's going to rip you to shreds. We need yes. you to tell us who won. It's the only way we ever know who won because yeah. we will argue about our creatures till death. Till so death. Mm-hmm. you need to go there's on clear, to iTunes. There's a clear answer, people. Interesting. Interesting. You need to go on to iTunes, ladies and gentlemen, Brosners. Go on to YouTube. In the comments, let us know who won. Was it Peter's? Adorable Mitch head on the on the body of a porcupine with the legs of a Persian house cat. For some reason, he thinks that's going to rip you apart. He also thinks it's the cutest animal in creation. Couldn't tell you why. Patrick brought his A game today yeah. with the head of a dick dick. Mm-hmm. Unbelievably adorable. Good. And that's dick dick no C's if you're Good Googling choice. that. Good choice. Um, the body of a baby French bulldog. Wrinkly, cute, very sweet with a dick dick head. Yeah. And the eight tentacle-laden arms of a giant Pacific octopus that will in- wrap you up and just, I assume, just pull your eyeballs out of so your head. So much power, yeah. It's yeah, an a lot going on. Yeah, Mitch kind of... brought to the table something that's, it's, it, I mean, Patrick called my creature an abomination. Mitch's is, it's, it's something. <laughs> it's a problem. He's got, I think he took it early in the game with the head of a baby Galapagos fur seal. Can't he then that. started to it's backpedal. Beautiful. When he went with the body of a silverback gorilla, less cute, more more muscle. more abominable snow. Get that muscle. Get that muscle in there. And then, and then he bob. put it on the gangly legs of a giraffe. So this have is a very large. Have you ever seen a giraffe animal. run in the wild? They're beautiful. It's That's true. It is majestic. Body, it's gonna be a majestic image. It is. That's true. Yeah. A first sale silverback giraffe is a beautiful. That's something. Image. So give him a vote if you vote for him, or ladies and gentlemen, yeah. if you're smart. You'll go onto one of these platforms and vote for yours truly, the broologist, who's put the adorable yet venomous head of a slow Loris on the body of a giant river otter, this this seemingly cute cylindrical animal, mm. with the claws of a cassowary, basically a velociraptor that from afar scary. is arguably the cutest thing you've ever seen, but up close will just rip you into a thousand pieces. Let us know who won. Go on iTunes. Go on YouTube. Vote. Yep. That's important to us. And, you know, we'll give something away if you do that. If you vote, what, what will the people win, Ratep? What will we give away tonight? Well, we can always give away merch. We still got to do the uh, the electric sunglasses. I propose we do that in a daily video <laughs> we're next gonna, We're going to do that in one of the dailies next sure. week. Yes, yeah. let's sure. do that. We're going to give away a pair of electric sunglasses. I'll give away but some if you merch vote. for this one. We'll do, yep. we'll do a shirt. Uh, of, your, of their choosing, how about? Sure. Yeah, of course. Yep. You want electric, the could have yeah. the, electric sunglasses are on the table for... The winner? Not for you, Mitch. You just no, steal mine no, on the shoots. No, you don't get from a couple no, weeks I, I, was, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna say that you know, as a regular on your show, I've I've not gotten a pair of electric sunglasses. But well, that's because you've only listened to ten minutes. <laughs> that's because you've podcast. never voted, bro. You stole <laughs> so many of my I, sunglasses. I've worked with Forrest for three years. I've never gotten electric sunglasses. So. I have no. Comment. They're pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, just they're for the hell dope. of it, we'll so, throw in one so of Pat's anyone, engagement anyone who shirts. can get those, those are those are sick. Because even I, even I can't get. A pair of 
apparently yeah. electric. Oh, <laughs> so oh if my God. you voted on iTunes, check out the YouTube because uh, we will be announcing it in one of the dailies next week who won the electric yep. sunglasses. Yep. And then uh, for no, this one, if me. you vote for Mitch, you've wasted your vote. Uh, but, but still vote. Uh, we are giving away <laughs> a T-shirt of your choosing. And if you want one with me wearing a suit, looking oh God. really no good, uh, yeah, I no could probably that. get an extra for you. <laughs> Bro, no, thanks no, for joining us. Mitch, it was wonderful having thanks, you on the buddy. pod tonight. This to might become more of a regular thing. You're a treat. You're absolutely hammered. If any, if there's anybody here that doesn't know that, it's very clear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him a microphone next time he comes on, too. All right. well, I, need, I need an actual mic, for sure. All you right. said it. Good Love night. Guys. Good night, everybody. It's fun. Thanks, guys. <laughs>